Hi, I'm Ben Duchaney, the web editor of Guy Kingmore Magazine. I'm here to show you how to tie a clouser minnow. Alright, I've already started my thread about three quarters of the way down the hook shank. I uh, just want to wrap forward to the other three quarter mark. Next step is to take dumbbell eyes, start them diagonally on the hook shank, and then when you wrap the other way, once you get it started a little bit, the eyes will actually straighten out themselves with a little, with a little bit of a help. All right. Now that those are on there, we're gonna wrap underneath the thread wraps, underneath the dumbbell eyes. I'm sorry, uh, to create a base. And then one whip finish to make sure the thread stays in place. Now if you have a rotary vise, this makes the process a lot easier. Uh, but if you're like me and just broke your rotary vise, um, you can just flip the hook over and do it that way. Uh, first step after you flip it over is to take some white bucktail cut off a bunch a uh, little group so you big pull off the extra hairs that you don't want uh, the stray hairs, the ones that are too short, the ones that are too bent uh, you want them all to kind of follow the same line be the same length, give or take, um, and just kind of stick together. Like, kind of like so. See, like these hairs? Get rid of those. That's what you want. You can take these hairs and split them over the, the hook and lay them on the hook shank. With a few wraps, keep it in place. All right. Next, we're going to use Crystal Flash. Uh, I like the UV Pearl because I think it reflects better in low light situations, like like at dawn or midnight uh, for the. With a full moon, you know the those nighttime runs. And give it a few better wraps. Pull it in place. Now, when you take the flash out, it's too long, so you fold it in half. Give it one wrap around the hook, the thread, and then lay it over. So you're gonna have a little loop at the end. Just snip that, and it's all set. Next. Take some yellow. Now I like a sparse clouser minnow. Um, striper here tend to like a smaller silhouette. So those hairs are bad. I'm gonna use different ones. So I tend to make my clouses a little smaller, with less yellow. Um, after it's been in the water a little while too, it, the yellow will actually bleed through the white uh, and make more of an off yellow white, off white fly, uh, which actually mimics the bait fish better around here. Anyways. Then, after you lay that on your hook shank, give it a few thread wraps to keep it in place. After you build up your head, give it a few whip finishes to, to secure it. And trim your thread. Now because there's bluefish around here, uh, and I also like to make my flies last a little longer, um, I'll actually use some um, head cement. 
Uh, if you're going to be fishing these clouds or minnows for species of fish that have teeth, uh, I would highly recommend fixing it. It makes them last longer. Uh, and it actually makes the head look better. It just kind of cleans it up a little bit. Uh, and that's it. Now there's many variations of clouds or minnows. Um, different sizes, different colors, different materials. Um, I'm using a white bucktail, yellow bucktail, crystal flash, size 4 hook, and white thread. Um, like I said, because of the stripers on Cape Cod, that's what they tend to like. But you can use any materials, any colors, with the same basic configuration, and you have a clouser now. And if you're like me, you can even go back and get rid of the the hairs that are driving you nuts because they're sticking up and that's it well hopefully you learned how to tie a clouds mino and hopefully give you some tips on what the striper is like on Cape Cod uh, I'm Ben Duchene the web editor of Kayak Angler magazine and I hope you enjoy this digital extra